Well, we had the Health and Safety at Work Act, obviously, from the Romans report in 1772. Uh, the Health and Safety at Work Act came in and it mentioned that there was going to be the safety reps regulations because it's part of the Health and Safety at Work Act. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were wondering, why is it just for unions only? What happens to non-unionised? Yeah. And that obviously came in at a later date. Um, and I think it was a very good step change. And as people are well aware now, those organisations that had trained safety reps, whether or not they were union appointed, and a safety committee have halved their fatality rates and halved their uh, senior serious injury rates. I mean, that's a proven fact. And I think part of that was the education and training of safety reps, because that was done initially within the trade union, eventually the National Examination Board of Occupational Safety and Health, NEBOSH, developed the NEBOSH certificate, which a lot of the safety reps then went on. This is the second edition, but that is the brown book. Uh, why they made it brown, I'm not sure. But the whole concept is it was meant to be made as pocket size so the safety representatives could carry it around with them. And if there's any uh, conflict, they could say, well, look, it says here I'm allowed to do this. And the way it works is that you have the regulation, which is the, the legal bit, backed by the approved code of practice, which is, if you like, the way, the best way of achieving compliance with the le legislation, and then also the guidance notes, which really is a how-to guide of how to do it. The role of the safety representative is to represent, as the word implies, their members, and originally when it started off they were trade union members, and there was a feeling if you're not in a union, you can't be safe, that can't be right, from, from a professional point of view. But indeed, the whole concept was if one of the people at work was injured, it was up to the safety representative to investigate why and how and to put preventive measures into place to make sure the things didn't go wrong again, rather than the more proactive approach which we've got today of involving the safety representatives in, in risk assessments, workplace inspections, that sort of thing. So I think we've gone from a negative stance to a positive stance with the help of the regulations and obviously experience. The board, the CEOs, the C-suite, whatever you want to call them, those are the business leaders, that's where our leadership has got to come from and we've got to make sure that they are fully aware of their roles and responsibilities and they know what the hazards and risks are in their workplaces. Well, I think as far as the safety reps bit is concerned is getting the safety representatives to realise that it's not an us and them situation and to get away from the, the, the conflict and the argumentative side of things to get everybody working together as a team to improve the overall health and safety management system. As health and safety becomes an item on the board agenda everybody is on board with the board to get things done and uh, leadership is something that I think has started off. It was in the Health and Safety Work Act, it was definitely in the management regulations and it will definitely be a very important part of ISO 45001 and that, that will make quite a difference and another way to enable the safety representatives to get much more on board and engaged in the whole concept of uh, safety and health uh, prevention. In the early days, late, late 70s, early 80s, because we were predominantly here doing work in heavy manufacturing industry, the emphasis was on injury prevention. Getting people to understand that, that the health problem is, is a longer term problem, you know, accidents can happen in milliseconds, asbestosis and mesothelioma takes 20, 30, 40 years to manifest itself. So I think it's getting people to realise that the pace of work has changed over the last 20 to 30 years. So the health issues are becoming more important and obviously health and safety executives are well on board with that, which is good. Yeah, I think safety reps do help Britain work well because of their on-the-shop floor involvement. They see things on a much more regular daily basis. They spot things, they take action, the hazard is eliminated, they're the eyes and ears of the safety professional and everywhere I've been and has been safety reps we've always tried to engage them and work together with the safety professional to get to get the job done and I think it's vital that uh, working well together includes safety representatives. We need more safety representatives, uh, there needs to be <coughs> more of a coordination I think 
Now, whether that's going to come through the trade unions, but then that will only coordinate possibly 10 or 20% of the safety representatives. So I think there has to be a lead from the health and safety executive to try and empower health and safety representatives. And the way that's going to come about is through ISO 45001, because it is in there in tablets of stone about worker engagement. So uh, the 40th anniversary has come at the right time, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's hope we have a nice 50th celebration with more and more safety reps and less and less problem areas to worry us. So I would like to see refresher training in it for safety representatives and then everybody then would, would get the same amount of information and therefore to be able to investigate health issues as well as safety issues and I think that's beginning to happen but I think it needs, um, it probably needs a revision of the approved code of practice possibly or new guidance to actually spell out what what the, the how how to do things in a more pro productive and proactive way, and I think it's vitally important that safety and health is an enabler. It enables people to do stuff, not stops people doing stuff, yeah. and that's vitally important. We get that message across.